Warren's my hand down in case I'm going up. <laughs> so we'll let you. I think I can. We'll let you get going. By the way, please do feel that all the team can come up to the front. It doesn't just have to be one person. So it's nice for us to get a sense of who's actually been working on it. It's part of the, the sharing of actually what's going on. But if you don't want to go up, you don't have to. <coughs> Jazz and Gareth gave us our sense check in, and the, the two witchcraft people are Lindsay and Warren for this, and I'm just the interferer. That's all right. <laughs> um, I'll be quick. The, the, the angel, angel is an acronym. Activities, needs, goals, escalation, location, which has come out of a piece of research to say what are the things, the significant things, that affect the judgment of a clinician. Um, and those are big simplifications. Um, so what we're trying to do is try to um, mimic that intuitive decision making and creation by creating an app that allows them to capture that decision in the moment of them making it in a way that is as intuitive as we could possibly get. So if we could bring up the, um, the little tool. Do you want to bring it up? Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about Bob. Uh, that's not Bob, but Bob's a real patient. Uh, I'm just going to use the, uh, the device that we've created to uh, explain Bob's little story. Um, First thing that happened with Bob is that um, an ambulance was called, so on our little tool, it's an escalation score of four, so we've got a little clicky button here, but I can score a four. Um, uh, Bob was at home, um, so Bob scores a one at home, and um, what happened was an ambulance man turned up at Bob's house. He walked through an open door, saw bin bags up the stairs, the kitchen light hanging off, uh, walked into a living room where there was a chair covered in blankets next to a table full of tablets, next to an old man lying on the floor by a phone that made the phone call. Um, on this gaming system, Bob scores a, five, a four on A. He's quite isolated and quite vulnerable. Um, the ambulance does his quick ambulance uh, assessment, which is he looks bad, smells bad, and is panting. But the ambulance man goes, this guy is quite ill and needs to see somebody today. Seeing somebody today is a four on needs. Um, and the ambulance man looks at this situation and says, well, given this situation, uh, what's going to happen to Bob if I don't do anything? And what's going to happen to Bob is he's going to be very, very ill. And what this creates is a little pattern in the back of the mind of, of the paramedic. The paramedic's going, look at this asymmetric shape. This is a weird kind of situation. Um, so what the, um, what the paramedic decides is, I can't leave Bob at home on the L score there. What I'm going to do with Bob is, I'm going to send him into a &E. So I escalate Bob, and uh, Bob gets this big, round, even shape. Bob's in a crisis, uh, score of 17. Um, so what happens next is Bob goes into a &E, and uh, in a &E his daughter turns up. So he's not quite as isolated as we first thought. Uh, they, 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 uh, Bob is still very, very ill, but he's not going to die, they've stabilised him, so his goals have reduced a little bit. But he still needs to get uh, to another bed urgently out of here, so we're going to admit Bob to our uh, intermediate care beds in the community. So Bob gets removed and admitted from the Indian on 12, with a smaller, less intense pattern, but still fairly regular, so we know what we're doing. And then Bob responds really well to treatment, actually. His needs drop significantly, he's as good as he's going to be before. Um, We've got an MDT involved because Bob is still quite isolated, but he's going to go home and support some support, and we've discharged Bob on the set. And uh, what we found is with, uh, with this tool, that this is a really innovative little app where you can put your thumb on it and you can capture that decision making process with the ANGEL in a few seconds while you're in the intervention with the patient. It's really fast, really intuitive, and that's a real story, a real case that we've mapped, by the way. Um, so this is something really simple and straightforward that just looks at that moment of decision. Um, the metadata is we, get, we can identify a patient and there are various means, invite various staff and where this takes place. Um, we can review a scoring history, and this is a lovely little example of looking at Bob over a period of time. We can put uh, push messages out through the app, there's a warning, we can look at the five different indicators, that's an aggregate score, and underneath, obviously what we've got is the bigger pictures. And then we can also look at this uh, data um, of individual members of staff and the cleverest bit is that we can look at that data over periods of time and it gives you a histogram which says intensity of care and changes in need. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so let's start with some questions. Any questions from our judges? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really slightly and really pretty and you're mapping what's already happening. Why is it useful that you're mapping uh, the, the training teams that have currently used the method on by sticking bits of wood in bits of paper um, <laughs> say that it, it does actually mirror their intuitive process. But what normally happens in most clinical places, I'm sorry to be rude if there's information in the room, but you make this wonderfully sophisticated judgment based on empirical knowledge and depth of experience. 
and then you get this sliced up in a tree which is nicely structured and doesn't not actually structured in the same way that you made a decision. So you record it in some paper way which goes from three-dimensional to two-dimensional and the IT systems is electric bit of paper so you translate it again. So the information is actually recorded and stored is at least two or three translations away from that lovely judgment. What happens also is if me and him look at the weird woman and we try and make a decision about what she needs, my intuitive judgment's in my head, his is in his head. And if we collude, and we've done the research on this, if we collude over her, we'll create this other thing, which is a collusion, which is neither I think nor he thinks nor she is. But what we do is if I make a judgment and he makes a judgment, and we look at this about this shape, we can compare them. And if he thinks something is different, there's something I don't know what he does. So we can very quickly flag differences of opinion in real time. And after Tim, a while, so the tradition yeah. is... I know, it's like hard time. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, so that means it would work if several people are... Mm. Yeah, fundamentally it's communication tool that simplifies and speeds up transfer of data and keeps the fidelity really high, which allows you to review that data and the analytics we produce. They're an early stage version, but you could literally drill lots of different kinds of data out of it. It collects lots of metadata, which could probably indicate patterns that would allow management to uh, improve on trend data and your Yeah, it seems that we have place. just about run out of time. I'm going to ask the judges, do you want to have, the judges want to have one minute more to ask questions? No? Okay, we'll move on to the next. Thank you very much. Thank you.